So, welcome to Types of Programming Languages, Computer Science. So basically, this is going to be more like a we listen, then we answer questions, and we listen, then we answer questions, so on and so forth. Because I'm learning this for the first time, maybe. Well, this is just like revision. So, high level languages. So, most computer languages are written in high level programming languages. So, these have stuff such as print and select from users, so that has things that we as humans would understand very easily. High level languages are stuff such as Java, Python, C++. Humans can understand, but it means that it takes a longer time to be able to compile. Why don't we always use them? Because um, computers actually only process binary, so we would have to convert it, which takes a long time. So why don't we use high level languages? So Computers can't understand them, basically. Computers only understand binary. So what do these statements look like high-level languages? Yeah, shumshisto, that one. Shumshisto, mavodvobro, and clap. Clap. So, low-level programming languages are languages which are much closer to computer understandable binary. So low-level languages are much closer to machine code, which is stuff that machines use. Humans can't actually read them. Well, they might be able to, but not really. And their commands such as mov, shimp, cli. And you don't use them because humans can't process them. They can't change hardware in a way. And they're used for low specification things. So low-level languages next need something. And then high-level languages so needs less well, time to compile, or less words, characters. It needs less words, basically. All other languages are much closer, but they need less what? They need less words. But I don't. Commands. Is it commands? No. Much closer. What do they need less of than high level languages? They need less words. Space. Time. It's complex. It's compilation time. No other languages are boring to read for human. Well, they're not boring to read. Impossible or harder? I feel like is it. Well, for some people, it is impossible. No other languages produce short and faster code, which is useful for computers with low something, especially in visit systems. So that would be. That would be when you would have low necessities, but I don't think. Necessities. No. So specifications. So it's like in a way what you do. So something level language are made out of something readable statements. So high level languages are made out of human readable statements that make it easier for us to understand. Low level languages need less translation. Translation than high level languages. Simple. Types of programming languages, high level, low level. Bap. So next is programming prodigms. Sounds like partridges. So programming pro prodigms. A programming prodigm is a way of coding to solve a problem. We have four types of these. Each one is geared towards a certain solution. With each prodigm, there are many different programming languages that offer different types of things than the other. Some can be used more than others. So, procedural programming. This is the most common part of the programming language. You have built in simple data types like string, character, boolean, int, and real. They focus on a set of instructions that are followed to achieve a desired outcome. Python is one of these. Oh, yeah, object orientated. So, these are used to be able to make real life models. These use class and attributes and stuff such as Java. Declarative. These are statements used to describe a problem to be solved instead of how to solve a problem. The statements that are given up are figures on how to get the best result. And functional programming are functions that we build programs out of. These functions take different procedures and follow sets of rules 
and they must take valid inputs and return outputs. Simple. So which of the following are properties of procedural programming? So that is the absolute first one there. And that's stuff such as data types, so int, sha, extraction, and statement. What? Everything's a statement. Which of the following is an example of declarative? Declarative. There's the last one, so that is assembly. I'm checking, but I ain't getting that one wrong. That's functional, so it's SQL, yeah. I thought it looked familiar. So, procedural programming languages are the most common language. Procedural languages have become more popular. These now have many libraries that are pre compiled code that we can use. This will speed up progra um, programming processes, e.g., Netflix using Python programming la language to manage their system. Data types and structures. Procedural languages have built in basic data types such as strings, integers, real numbers, boolean, and characters. Procedural languages also have advanced data structures such as arrays, stacks, and queues, and procedures. Procedural language programs are built out of procedures that perform an action. Procedures are reusable and make it quick to program. So procedural languages now feature many libraries of predetermined, pre-made. It's predetermined, isn't it? Pre determined something code to use pre-compiled what property of procedures make them beneficial for programmers so they're easy to use they're reusable they're not CPU intensive or they run quickly they're reusable in programming languages, they use statements to describe a program to be solved instead of how to solve the programs are called declarative. Da -da -ba -ba -da -da. Netflix uses the Python programming language to manage their system. It's a procedural programming. So, basic data types, strings, real numbers, shars, boolean, and integers. Simple. Love to see it. So next, assembly and machine code. Little man computer was a brilliant example of this to be honest. It was like add, subtract, times, divide, etc. And that like that was brilliant. So assembly language. Assembly language was first used of programming language to come about after machine code programming. Assembly language. Assembly language was the first time a programming language to come about after machine code programming. Assembly languages uses three-letter mnemonics or key actions such as int for input to make them easier to remember for a developer. So Little Man Computer is the best version of this. It kind of like it shows von Neumann's architecture in process. So these are mnemonics. There are add, um, subtract store, load, etc, etc, and they all do a lot of things. So little man computer addressing. Assembly language is low level and can be used for different types of addresses to access memory locations. So, this one, which we probably will never use ever again, but it just doesn't, can be the following instruction. Add, add, b, branch always, in, input, data, send, Location simple. So, how many letters do mnemonics have? Three mnemonics. So, machine code instruction. Machine code is a low level language that controls the CPU. The machine code instructions. When your program is run, it is converting the machine code instructions. Machine code instructions will have a different sized instruction based on the architecture. These machine code instructions are split into sections. Machine code instruction contents. The first section is basic machine operations. This is the instruction to perform, such as addition. The second part is addressing mode. The addressing mode is usually stored in two bits. The addressing mode tells the processor which type of addressing to use on the operand code or op code for short. And the final part is the instruction is the operand or op code, which will be translated differently depending on the address. So the actual 
premise is you send the instruction, there's an address mode, and there is a final part. So what form is the first part of machine code is mnemonic? Oh, for God's sake. So what is this? It is First of all, it is machine operation, operand, and the mode of addressing. This is being a nightmare today. How many instructions does Little Man Computer have? It has a grand total of... 11, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, the second part of the machine is called the assembly... Li... Assem... Abelie? Assembly. Assembly. Give us a second. It is called the addressing mode. Addressing mode. Addressing mode is usually stored in that. That was not meant to be thirty-two. That was meant to be two. The addressing mode tells the processor which type of addressing to use in the machine. Operand code. So what form is the first part? Binary. And this hasn't gone well at all. Try to program. Well, yeah. So. Mode of addressing memory. Programs can be coded to use direct types of memory addresses. This allows program instructions to access high numbers of memory locations for storing and retrieving data and instructions. Immediate addressing. In immediate addressing, the opcode is the actual value to be used. The binary opcode of 000101 will give the value 5 to the CPU. This is a way of working directly with data. Direct addressing. In direct addressing, the opcode is the address for the memory location where the data can be found. The value is not given directly. The CPU has to retrieve the value from a given memory location. Indirect addressing. An indirect addressing, the opcode, is the location of the value to be used. It's usually a register. By using indirect addressing, the CPU can access significantly higher amount of address locations. An indexed addressing. In indexed addressing, the opcode is one value that is added together with a value stored in the index register to give the location of the data that will be used. The index register value is a constant value that indicates the first memory location for the data array item data. Brilliant. So if the machine code was to give the opcode that, what value is given to CPU 17? Maps. So in indexing address, the opcode is one value that is added together with a value stored in the index register. Be able to give a location. The index register value is a something value that indicates the first memory location of a something of the data. So what could it be? The index register value is a something value, a constant value that indicates the first memory location of an array of data items. By adding the index values, no, is it not values? By adding the index registers and the something value together you can get the address of the next location register nope it is opcode value together you can get the address of the next location what type of addressing does opcode specify is the location to be used I'll screw this 